What's going on everybody? Gunner here. Welcome to part three of the kind of flies for spin gear. Ultra finesse jig style flies. Uh, and this guy right here, this is actually a video that I, I recently made. This is called the Pheasant Rump Crawdad. And I want to show you guys how to repurpose this fly right here uh, onto a jig head for finesse fishing with spin gear. And look at that buggy body, massive claw profile, very light, sparse, simple antenna, all these buggy legs like a crayfish pattern. It's fatter in the back, skinnier up to the top. That thing is stupid deadly. <clears throat> On the previous video, I said I was going to tie it in the same size. I lied. Uh, the previous video, which was the bugger, uh, was tied on a 32nd ounce. I jumped up to a 16 ounce here, so it is a wee bit heavier the next size up. Um, I'm going to come in with some monofilament thread. Just plain and simple, this is six one thousandths of an inch diameter monofilament. And I'm going to show you guys how to tie basically an entire little crawfish pattern for fishing anything, I mean anything, using nothing but pheasant. This is just an entire pheasant cape. So, we're going to come here to the back, and right about yay, I'm just going to take some dubbing wax and smash it into my mono here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a junky piece of pheasant that I've already kind of repurposed, and I'm going to rip some of this marabou-like feathers off. And I'm just going to take that, whoa, where are you going? And I'm going to spin my fingers clockwise onto my thread here. Basically, create some all natural dubbing. You can see it's nice and messy and it's gonna make a big bump right here in the back and that bump is completely intentional because it's gonna allow me to flare those hackles out and get the illusion of kind of crayfish hackles. Not <laughs> crayfish hackles, crayfish claws. So that's all you're going to do to start. You're just going to put a big meaty bump right here in the back and then bring your thread back in front of that. And that's going to be kind of just a, a big bump to flare everything out and get that nice claw profile. So I'm going to come onto my pheasant here, way down here into these really short rump feathers. You can see they're very nice kind of iridescent mottled color to them. I'm going to choose two short ones. Now if you watch my pheasant rump crayfish tutorial. I do a little bit more complex of a claw pattern. I use four feathers. Uh, I'm, I just want to keep it simple right now. So we're just going to use two and I'm going to have them kind of flared out so they're going to cup out away from the fly. So we're just going to keep it simple. I have this feather cut way back to where it starts to get a little bit marabou texture and this is a nice thick part of the stem that's also flatter and it makes it way easier to catch that feather so it doesn't rotate. I can lock that in place and then flip to the other side and lock my other claw in place. So that is already uh, a pretty simple little fly right there. Now the only thing I'm going to come in with that's a little bit different than the other patterns is some accent flash boo. And you can see this is kind of a barred copper color. It's the same flash boo I used in the other tutorial for the crayfish. I'm just going to drape that around my thread, pin it to the top, and basically just get some antennae that come out over the, the back of that. Because I think that's a pretty important little trigger. And so I'm going to cut these maybe an inch past my claws, and that's about it. Now I'm going to come, throw some more wax on my thread, I'm going to take some junk pheasant here and just spin my fingers clockwise around that thread. I'm going to build up another bump right here. And now to finish the fly, all we're going to do is take pheasant rump. We're going to try to do probably three pieces to finish the fly. And we're just going to palmer a long pheasant rump, a medium pheasant rump, and a short pheasant rump here at the back and then probably two right up at the head to get a nice full profile. And I'm not going to put a carapace on this, I'm not going to do uh, a darker back, I'm not going to try to create the horn, we're just going to make it buggy with claws and antenna and have that kind of fleeing crayfish presentation without making it too realistic. If you want to know more about how you could kind of imitate a, a more realistic crayfish pattern, feel free to check out this tutorial, the Pheasant Rump Crawdad. 
because that'll that'll show you a few more techniques there but we're just going to keep it simple so I'm going to find a, a nice premium long pheasant rump to make kind of our legs and mouth parts I'm going to take uh, a pretty decent medium one because we're going to move up the shank a little bit and I want it to be fairly long but then we're going to get a decent taper by going to a nice short one to, to finish the fly that being said that's a lot of lead up there so you're not going to get a lot of turns hmm. maybe I'll use two to finish the fly so we're going to use four total just because that's a lot of lead up there and I want to make sure that we have a nice buggy kind of leg profile so I'm going to come and I'm going to preen this back to where it gets more like marabou. Cut that clean. Preen off a little section of stem here. Lock that stem in place and from, from in front to behind. Come from behind back to in front over top of that. That's going to be a nice little figure eight there. Lock your thread in place with two half hitches so the marabou doesn't relax. Find your stem and just walk it around. catch that. <clears throat> then I'm just going to kind of control all these, get them on the other side of my hook point here. Tie those off. And again, I'm going to take my thread from where I tied it off to where I tied it in. So the entire stem is covered in thread for maximum durability. And then, this might be easier, I'm just going to whip finish down here. And then I'm going to hit that with some super glue. And then I'm going to start my thread back up on top here. Now I'm going to come in with that medium long pheasant rump hackle. I'm going to treat it the exact same as my previous one. Probably be ideal if I waited for all that super glue to dry here. Gonna figure out that hackle and then lock two half hitches in place. Yeah, she's mostly dry. I'm gonna come up and find my stem here and just slowly, gently walk that around, preen those hackles back. Because we increase the circumference here with all that lead, you're not gonna be able to get as many turns and it's not gonna be as clean. So just take your time with it, tie in all those stumps there. And then I'm going to come in with two short ones. I'm going to try to do maybe one turn each here, just with that thick piece of lead right there. So I'm just going to worry about catching that hackle. I'm not going to figure eight it this close to the, the jig eye. That gave me some trouble when I was tying the bugger. Trying to figure it way up there. Just get one nice clean turn. Yep, that'll work. Take your thread back over top of it. And then come way up to the eye here. Take that last short one and just rinse and repeat this guy. Again, I'm just going to catch this. I'm not going to worry about figure eighting it. Just because it's a little bit too too tight quarters and that jig head and the vertical hook eye and everything gets in the way. Find that stem. Take one, one walk through all the way around, back up. Catch that guy off, take all those hackles, preen them back, and take your thread back over the hackles. Yes. And that is a super simple, and I'll show you the full profile here in a second. Now I like using the mono, I should articulate this. The mono has a lot of strength for the size. The round thread really bites into the hackles so that they're all tied in very, very securely. Um, and it's also clear, 
So I don't have like a weird white or chartreuse or, you know, I don't have to match my thread to whatever color jig head or anything like that. It's, it's clear and it's just Danville's six thousandths of an inch monofilament thread. So I just hit that with some head cement or super glue, whatever you got. And look at that buggy body, massive claw profile, very light, sparse, simple antenna, all these buggy legs like a crayfish pattern. It's fatter in the back, skinnier up to the top. That thing is stupid deadly. So check it out. We got one more video for you guys on how to tie a leech pattern. And we're just going to follow the same program, keeping it simple, keeping it easy. And I'll, I'll try to do my best to equip you guys for spin fishing with hand-tied jigs. Let's do it.